Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Pastor Don Weekly Podcast Show. I want to thank you so much for joining me and listening to my weekly devotional today, anywhere that you can find it on social media, specifically uh, Spreaker or possibly YouTube, Facebook Live, or anywhere else. It's an honor and pleasure each and every week to give you my thoughts on a Bible teaching, but more importantly, to build you up in Christ. Before I begin my opening monologue, I want to welcome my friend and my brother in Christ, Donovan, to my show. How are you doing today, my friend? Doing great. Heat advisory, please, everybody. If you're in California, please stay under wraps. I'm going to tell you this. I don't have to ask him how his weekend was. I looked around his house and saw all the improvements he's done, and it looks awesome. Your house looks beautiful. Thank you. Doing a great, great job. Yeah, and he's right about this. With all the fires, the air quality is extremely bad. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but we need to stay safe. All right, here's my opening thoughts for today. You know, we are really getting close to the end of this podcast series on end times. We've actually gone 27 weeks up to this point that we've talked about so many topics in regards to end times. We've looked at the seal judgments of Revelation chapter 6. We went through all the trumpet judgments of Revelations 8 and 9. We went, learned about the three woes of God plus the first six bold judgments in Revelation 16. Today, we finish the judgments of God by looking at the seventh and final bold judgment in Revelation 16. So I'm going to read to you from Revelation 16 starting in verse 17. It goes like this, The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, it is done. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has occurred since man has been on this earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great, and gave her a cup filled with the wine of his, wine of the fury of his wrath. Final bowl judgment is known as the judgment of the massive earthquake. Now, we need to go back to Zechariah 14, verse 5, for the Old Testament prophecy of this severe judgment. You will flee by my mountain valley, for it will extend to Azel. You will flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzi Uzziah, king of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come, and all the holy ones will be with him. But I'm going to tell you this, folks. This earthquake that's described here in Revelation 16 will be 100 times more destructive than the ones ever done in the Old Testament. It is going to cause Jerusalem, the great city, to be split into three parts. This is a worldwide destruction. Never happened in the history of this world. God will use this to complete His wrath on this earth. Look at the results and reaction of the people when I read from the last verses of Revelation 16, verses 20 to 21. Listen to this, folks. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones of about a hundred pounds each fell upon men. And they cursed God on account of the plagues of hail, because the plague was so terrible. Now, I want to take a look at this final judgment a little bit more close. It is not only this huge earthquake that has never happened in the history of the world. Think about earthquakes for a second. We have earthquakes in certain areas of this world. You know, there's been more earthquakes in the last 10 years than probably the, the first 100 years in the 19th century. So earthquakes are, in, are increasing in frequency. But there has never, ever in the history of the world been a world wide earthquake. In other words, there's nowhere that you can be on this earth that will not feel this horrendous earthquake during this time. But then it's even more than that. It's just it's more than the, the, the earthquake. Think about this for a second, Donovan. On the head, they said massive hailstorms of a hundred pounds falling on the heads of the people of this earth. Mm. That's what's going to happen in the result of this earthquake. You imagine 100 pounds of uh, rock falling on your head? Boy, that'd give me a headache, that's for sure. Yeah, but look at the devastation and the effects of this judgment. Islands fleeing away, basically moving from their location. Mountains of the world crumbling to the ground. Plus the great city Jerusalem split 
into three parts. This is almost mind-boggling to imagine. Can, can you even think about something like this? I mean, we, we, the closest mountains to us, probably Big Bear, Idlewild, you know, you know, San Bernardino Mountains, we can't even imagine that those islands, will, I mean, those mountains will be leveled, basically to ground level because of this massive earthquake. There's going to be nowhere to hide because this earthquake and hailstorm will be worldwide. The earth at this point will be a fraction of what we see today. It will be ready for what I call the great makeover of God when he ushers in a new heaven and a new earth that is described beautifully in Revelation chapters 21 and 22. And folks, we know that this is the end because God says in Revelation 16 verse 17, it is done. It's very similar to what Jesus said on the cross right before he uh, died. When he says, it is finished from the cross. And you can see in verse 21, that the same earth dwellers, still, even after all this destruction, did not repent, and they continued to curse God through this ordeal. Now, what I want to do right now, is I want to look at the same scenario, but I want to look at it from God's point of view. What I want to do right now, is read to you from Revelation chapter 19. I think you'll really enjoy seeing the same thing, but from God's point of view. I'm going to look at Revelation 19, verse 11, until the end of the chapter. So bear with me. I think you'll enjoy listening to these verses. Revelation 19, 11 starts off, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of the mouth comes a sharp sword, with which to strike down all the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the wine presses of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. Verse 16, on his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, who cried out in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come, gather together for the great supper of God. Verse 18, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men of, of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and all their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. Verse 20, but the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Verse 21, the rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider of the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. Folks, God wipes away all the enemy armies with one swoosh. And the battle is over. This wasn't like World War I or World War II. It didn't last for years. It lasted a moment in time. The devil, the Antichrist, and the false prophet are condemned on this earth. And the heavens and the earth is now complete. God will usher a new heaven and a new earth during the time of the millennium. Folks, let me close this last judgment of the bulls by saying that this is the end of God's wrath to the unbelieving world. You already know that we are coming closer and closer to the end of the world as we know it today. The next step in God's glorious plan after this is the rule and reign of Jesus in the millennium. And we will get into that more next week. Again, the point of all this, again, is not to scare you. Now, you may be thinking right now, how does it not scare me? You're talking about a worldwide earthquake that affects every person on the earth. You're talking about 100 pounds of hailstorms 
falling on the heads of those still on this earth. How do I not feel fear during this time? But what this is for us, those who have surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, those of us that will be raptured prior to the tribulation period, now, today, is the time to be encouraged and also to motivate us to putting our feet to the faith because, folks, we are living in the end times. And the timing is now to witness to all people our love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus. There is no way none of us want any of our loved ones or people we know to experience all these judgments that we've been going through for the last few weeks. Think about it. The best thing that an earth dweller can look forward to in these days of the seven year tribulation is death. Because life on earth will be that horrible. Folks, this is not a movie. This is not a production. And especially, this is not fiction. It is real because we know the Bible is real. Everything that God prophesies in His Word will come true. We all need to get strongly motivated for God and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us in witnessing to others about the greatness of Jesus Christ. We never have to put our feet to the faith alone. God will lead us through the, within with the power of the Holy Spirit within us. But you and I need to make that first move. We need to recognize what God's plan is for an unbelieving world. And we need to get out into our own inner world and express and witness about Jesus and the gospel message. So let's be strong in our faith, starting today, starting now, and live for God each and every day, prioritizing putting our feet to the faith in His glory. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, Lord, again, we thank You so much for Your Word. Lord, You have told us in advance, uh, in this book of Revelation, what Your plan is to an unbelieving world. And for those still here, it will be destruction and devastation. But it doesn't have to be like this, Lord, for the people that we love. You want your children to repent and turn to you so they will not have to experience your wrath. And you have chosen us to be the instruments you use to spread the gospel message to our friends and family and all people. Lord, please put a motivating spirit in the hearts of each person listening or watching this podcast to witness to others about you. Let people see the reflection of you in the things we say and the things we do. Mm -hmm. Lord, we all have a job to do, but Lord, we need you to lead us. Thank you, Lord, for using us to do your work. We love you, Lord, and give you glory. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Folks, I hope you enjoyed the conclusion of the bold judgments uh, of God from the book of Revelation chapter 16. Now, next week you're in for a real treat because we're going to go to the next phase of God's prophetic plan in taking a look at the 1,000 year millennium, the reign of Jesus on the new earth. We are coming to the end of our podcast series and I hope and pray that you and I have both learned a lot and you're motivated to be a witness of the gospel to your family and friends. Now, if you've missed any of these podcasts, or if you missed any of the video podcasts, I'm going to ask Donovan to sh tell you how you can find it on the internet, on social media. Right. If you're looking for the uh, YouTube video, which is where all our podcasts uh, and videos are archived, just go to News from the Edgemont. One complete word. You should see it there. See a picture. I think, I, I think I'm, I'm on the picture. I think you're on the picture. Yeah, I'm on the picture, and all our stuff is archived there. But if you, if you still can't find it and you need a little help, just contact me, and I will give you the link, and you can take it from there. Okay. We have every one of these things archived, so you can go back and enjoy every one of these podcasts, either the videos or just the audios, and hopefully it help you to learn and grow in your faith. And, of course, my Reflections Ministry Facebook page is still going strong, so please continue to like and share the, the Reflections Ministry Facebook page to all your family and friends. Again, we're getting a lot of likes. My biggest problem right now is I seem to be in jail more than I'm not in jail. <laughs> Welcome. You know, reflection, I mean, uh, Facebook <laughs> seems to think that uh, some of my Christian posts... I was going to tell you this one, Donovan. I, made a, I, did, I, did a, I did a post 
about how we got to put Satan in his place. Mm -hmm. We need to get rid of Satan in our homes. Dare you. Get rid of Satan in our lives. Get rid of Satan in our workplace. And I posted that. No more than 10 seconds later, I got yeah. the notice yeah, yeah. saying, you are in jail for your hate speech. Well, if they're going to put me in jail for hating Satan, go for it. They can go ahead and do that. So you may not have seen as, as many of the... Um, as many as my uh, memes and um, uh, devotionals because of that. But you know what? I'm out now. <laughs> and I'm going to continue to do what God wants me to do. I just need you to do your part in spreading this um, uh, this uh, the Facebook page to all your family and friends. You know what, folks? You're thinking, gosh, man, he keeps talking about being a witness. Feet to the face. What is he talking about? It's as easy as a click of a button on that Facebook sharing it to all your family and friends. All your contacts. One click of a button and you are doing that witnessing that I'm talking about here on these podcasts. So it's not hard. It really isn't. It could just be just sharing other devotionals and sharing other memes that bring people up for the Lord. Again, thank you so much for listening to my opening monologue and God bless you and your family. Yes, God bless you guys. Um, Pastor Man, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to talk about, especially with the, the uh, conclusion of... Uh, the seals and uh, our trumpets and the, and the bolts. trumpets and the bolts. Mm -hmm. um, you just said that within ten seconds you went to jail. Now, oh, how do you that not, quick? Yeah, how do you not know when you're doing uh, God's work? Did you not expect that to happen? Oh, right? absolutely. Because because like I said, the devil probably saw that and said, "Oh, I'm gonna shut you down right now." You know what's funny? When I did that post, and I you know I I had a feeling. That I was going to get shut down. Because any time that you present any type of what they call, I'm talking Facebook algorithms or Facebook yeah. people, hate, then you're, they, they look at you as a hate group or a hate person, they shut you down. And I was saying that we need to hate Satan. Mm -hmm. Or we need to basically uh, uh, flee away from Satan, get Satan out of our lives. And of course, without understanding. And they say, well, all you have to do is... um. Just write a little note to Facebook why you should not be in Facebook right. jail. Mm -hmm. So I said very simply... I hate Satan. <laughs> and I'm telling my, my Christian friends and my Christian groups uh, of this devotional, like-minded people just like us, and basically they said, sorry. And they kept me in jail for about a week. So, you know what? And you know what? Is, it's, but you know, like you said, you expect this. Mm -hmm. I expect to be persecuted. Yes. I expect That's to right. be thrown in jail. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Because guess what? I use my son's <laughs> Facebook page, right. and I'll share it through his page. I'll use Donovan's. I'll share it through. We're going to get the message out, mm -hmm. no matter what, because that's what God has us here to do. Because I always said this, Donovan, if you're not being persecuted, then, then Satan's not worried about you, right. and, he says, and he doesn't care. So I'll tell you, if we're being persecuted, that means we must be doing something for right. the Lord. I mean, uh, back, back to what you're saying, Satan's not worried about you because you're probably doing what Satan needs you to do exactly. in regards to him. So, you know, that's a soul. I'll never understand Facebook, though, when it comes to stuff like this. And a lot of people say they do it by algorithms or yeah. they do it by certain words right. or something like that. Right. Which is but there's got to be ridiculous. a human being. That's no. A, no. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's just so I mean, crazy. What, Facebook has 8 billion followers. So something like that. In front. But, you know, people that don't, we need jobs, but... That's just so crazy. crazy. But, but you know what, folks? It doesn't matter. Nothing's going to stop us. Nothing's going to stop our Reflections Ministry page. Nothing's going to stop these podcasts. Nothing's going to stop us from advancing the Word of God. They can, they can put me in jail all day long. We're going to figure out ways to get the message out. And, and, and that's my point, what I want to uh, tell the listeners and the viewers as well. I'm not saying, you know, not everybody's a spirit warrior. They're going to go out there and fight. But there's all kinds of things you're going to do. Uh, if you're afraid to be ridiculed, there's going to be a lot of distractions out there this time of year. In, in the United States right now, we are in election season. So there's all kinds of this, these distractions and hate groups and all these things are going to be happening. But you've got to stay focused on God. You know, it's funny that, you know, Donovan and I, we like to talk and, you know, discuss, you know, very, you know, it's awesome discussions. Because yeah. Donovan and I don't see things eye to eye on a lot of things. And that's good. That's what makes people different. Learn. But the whole idea is, is that this country is completely divided. Yeah. You know, and everybody has their opinions. And, and I don't have a problem with people having different points of view. The problem I have is when the division is, is to the point that it consumes us. And unfortunately, in, when it's especially when it comes to politics, mm -hmm. usually, usually I always thought it was coming to sports, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. football yeah, games. No, no, but when it comes to politics, it's absolutely out of control. Yeah. So Donovan's right when he says, 
It's consuming us. It's taking us away mm -hmm. from what's really Stay important. Focused. And what's important is what God teaches in his word. We can't get caught up in the things that we like or don't like about politics. Mm -hmm. We need to continue to do the work that God wants us to do in, in witnessing his word. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, usually before the, uh, the, the podcast and video cast, uh, me and Pastor Don talk, and we you know we chat, and we just say, "Hey, you heard about this? Heard about that? What about LeBron? Or you know, whatever mm -hmm. LA, you know, whatever we're talking about." Sure. But here's the funny thing: at the end of the day, the, uh, Pastor Don asked me the question, "What do you think is going to solve it?" I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. God. He gave the perfect answer. You know, we were talking a little bit about some of the main issues that's going on in our country. There's no <clears> name, <throat> and there and there is a lot of issues that we are really struggling with, and you all know pretty much what they are. And I looked at Donovan, straight up, says, Donovan, if you were in charge, how would you solve it? And he gave me the absolute perfect answer, and it's prayer. Correct. Giving it to God. Correct. Letting God lead us versus mm -hmm. letting man lead us, because man doesn't know what they're doing. Right. Obviously, look at our country. So it's all about prayer. So instead of getting angry, mm -hmm. instead of getting frustrated, instead of you know voicing and then getting violent or whatever with your family, I mean, I've, I've heard now stories that you can't even bring up certain names at the right. dinner table yeah. or people would actually get violent mm -hmm. or they'll leave the room or leave the house mm -hmm. or whatever. Where is this? What's, what's going on here? You know what? When, if you like Trump, you don't like, if you like Republicans or Democrats or don't, it doesn't matter. It all needs to go to God in prayer because we do need to get reunited together under God. And, it's and, not, we're not. and it's not that it just needs to go to God. When it's all said and done, it's all going to be about God. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly so, right. So that's exactly right. right. Yeah. So I mean, this uh, Trump, Obama, Clinton—it doesn't, Clinton, doesn't matter. Stay focused on God because only God can solve our problems. I'll tell you this right now: one thing that uh, Mr. Trump and and all the rest of them before them. They have to answer to God yes, as well. Absolutely. They are not the supreme commander. They mm -hmm. may think they're president of the United States. It's great. That's, that's great. That's wonderful. They still have to answer the Lord as well. So, okay. you know what? You may not agree or disagree with policies, but one thing that you have the power to do is to pray. Right. And that's what I'm, I'm encouraging and, everybody to do. And, 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 and that's what uh, soothes my heart because I don't care how bad things are getting out there. God is here, and he's the only one that's going to solve it for me. Oh, man. I mean, we can almost end the podcast right now because that is so true. <laughs> Because right now, so many hearts are torn. When, when, when we get to my next part of my um, pod, my lesson here, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But that that is so true. If it's, if it's not the stress at work, if it's not the stress at home, uh, or the stress with health, or or your kids, or whatever, mm -hmm. there is stress everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now, if you add to it all these politics and mm -hmm. bipartisan distractions. distractions, it's like if you're overwhelmed, you're just like, what's mm -hmm. going on? And, 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 and it affects people. Very much physically, emotionally, yeah. and, 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 and uh, unfortunately, even spiritually. So there is the one answer to all of that is going to be prayer. Right. Let God handle it. Mm -hmm. God's got the plan. Mm -hmm. He knows what's going to happen to this country today, tomorrow, 20 years mm -hmm. from now. So let, let God be the one that um, uh, makes things happen the way he sees fit. And let us just enjoy the joy of Christ, the joy and the love of the Lord. Right. And also remember that uh, Jesus doesn't always come on your time, but he's always on time. That's exactly right. You know what? Sometimes we have to wait. Mm -hmm. And that wait can be years. But you know what? God's timing is perfect. So yeah, it doesn't matter. I want to talk a little bit about stress. You know, it's, it's because, you know, I, I, I do a lot of reading. And most of it, my reading is based on, for you know, for the, the devotionals, from sermons, Bible studies, and all that stuff. But, you know, sometimes I like to read a lot about um, just what's going on with family. See, I'm really mm -hmm. big. When it comes to families, I think one of the main reasons why, you know, our country is struggling badly right now is basically the disunity of a family. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that families have basically disintegrated. I mean, there's very, very few, you know, traditional families of a mother, a father, kids, you know, the, you know, sitting at a dinner table together. You know, all of that has basically gone away and that's needs to come back if we're going to be more unified. Sure. But the thing I just mentioned was the idea of the stress. And I, I, I listen to so many people because now that the Reflections Ministry Facebook page has gotten a lot larger, almost 2,100 followers, Amen. I get a lot of comments. Amen. And a lot of the comments are, is stress, mm -hmm. anxiety, depression, 
frustration, not only because of politics, but because of just life like in life. general. Just, life. just the idea that the, you know, the work schedules and the money the problems and everything else is just burdening us to the point that sometimes I get these uh, texts or these uh, messages that they just don't want to continue going forward with life. So I thought about it, you know, last week I took a look and I gave, I had a little fun giving you the five most um, popular verses. And if you guys don't remember, uh, number one is probably the most famous verse of all time, which is John 3.16. And, and, and rightfully so, because John 3.16 is basically the essence of what the gospel message is all about. Jesus dying for us because of the amazing love he has for us. But what I want to do today is I want to encourage you. I know so many of you watching this or so many of you listening that you're feeling stressed right now. You're feeling that anxiety. Sometimes to the point that you can't even sleep at night. You don't have an appetite. You are so much engulfed with all your issues and problems and stuff that it is truly affecting you physically and emotionally as well. So what I want to do is I want to give you my what I call my top five Bible verses for fe- when you're feeling overwhelmed, stressed, and frustrated. So these are the verses, and if you want to write them down, or if you just want to memorize them or whatever, these are the verses that needs to be in the in your heart so that you can allow God to calm you. You can allow God to give you peace, because trust me, you won't get it from this world. So let's go to the top five. Number five, when you're feeling frustrated, it's Philippians 2, verses 14 to 15. Philippians 2, verses 14 and 15 says, Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God. What causes us to become more frustrated is when we can't be content with what God has given us for this day. What we need to realize is every day is a blessing. Every day is a gift. So let's not complain. Let's not argue about things that's going on. But instead, let's be content with what God has blessed us with. And let's be promoting Him. And let's be practicing contentment in our lives and complaining. When you allow contentment of God to overwhelm your uh, complaining and confusion, you can have peace in your life. All right, that's number five. Number four, Galatians 6.9. Galatians 6.9 says this, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We were just talking about that when it comes to Reflections Ministry page and being in jail. Jail. We talk a lot about this. This takes up a lot of Donovan's time. A lot. I mean, not only the setup, not only the time to be on the show, the editing and everything else. But the one thing for not to be frustrated is that we cannot ever get weary for doing good. We know that we're doing this show. I don't care if we have 10 listeners or 10 million listeners. We are going to touch lives because of what we're doing here. We cannot get weary of that. We need to stay focused on the things of God. Don't get distracted by the things of this world and keep going forward. Once we do that, we get rid of that frustration. We get rid of that um, discouragement because we know what we're doing is we're, pro- we're, we're promoting the kingdom of God and that's a blessing. All right, that's number four. Number three, when you're feeling stressed, this is a short verse, so you might be able to memorize it. It's 1 Peter 5.7. 1 Peter 5.7 says this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat that. 1 Peter 5.7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Do you believe that God cares for you today? He does. Do you believe that he can take all that burden that you're feeling in your heart right now and he can t- deal with it and he can bring you that peace that you so long for? Yes, he can. The key for that is to surrender. Surrender your issues, your anxieties, your worries, your stress. Surrender it to God and don't take it back. Let God handle your problems and your issues and allow God to soothe you. Allow God to calm you. Allow God to give you peace. 1 Peter 5, 7 is a promise from God. He cares for you. So cast all your burdens on Him. He will give you peace. Trust me. I For the first 45 years of my life, I did not cast my burdens on Christ. Mm-hmm. I, I lived with anxiety. I lived with a lot of um, frustration and discouragement. And once I realized that every day is a new day and I can give my issues and my problems to God because He cares for me, Things really change. Really so change. It's, it's really an awesome verse to keep in the mind, in, in, in your mind. Number two, 
when you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling a little bit frustrated is another beautiful, beautiful promise of God. It's Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew eleven twenty eight says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You will not find rest in this world. You will not find rest in the things of this world. What you will find in this world is more busyness, you will find more stress, and you will find more anxiety. But Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, those who are weary. Are you weary today? Are you feeling overburdened today? Are you feeling stressed out today? Come to the Lord. Give those things to Him. And He promises you, if you give it to Him, He, God, will give you rest. There's so many people that I, I, I listen to, Donovan, that probably hasn't had a good restful night's sleep in weeks, months, or years mm-hmm. because they are so consumed by everything that's going on in their lives. How would you like to have one day of rest? No, you can have every day of rest if we, cut, if we go to the Lord when we're weary and when we're burdened and allow Him to give us peace. That's what that verse is. Again, another promise of God so we know that God's promises are true. And the last one, the very number one, the number one verse when you're feeling stressed, the number one verse that I go to when I'm feeling a little bit of anxiety in my, in my mind and heart is from Matthew 6.34. Matthew 6.34, Jesus says, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its Amen. own. Amen. I know so many people that are so worried about what's going to happen in the midterms. I know so many people is so worried about what World War III is in the Middle East or in Afghanistan or somewhere in the world. I know so many people that are worried about their own families, what's going to happen in 10, 15, 20 years. We're so worried about things that we don't even know if we're going to be here. Exactly. We don't even know if we're going to be around. We have no control of it altogether. So Matthew 6.34 says, do not worry about tomorrow. Be joyful in today. Don't worry about tomorrow because we don't even know there is a tomorrow. It will worry for itself. And if you stop worrying about tomorrow, you have no idea how much burden you will lift off your own shoulders Mm -hmm. because now you're not over-consumed about things you can't control in the beginning with. So that verse saying, do not worry about tomorrow, each day has enough trouble of its own, God recognizes that there's trouble. He tells us that in the, in the book of John. He says that, uh, you know, in this world you will have trouble. But, but believe me, I have overcome this world. That's what this verse is all about. Is giving it to him. We, he recognizes each and every one of us is going to have trouble. But when we surrender to him, the trouble lessens because he's taken over that burden. So, those are the top five, my top five verses in regards when you're feeling overburdened, stressed, and full of anxiety. Take those verses to heart. Memorize them if you want. Highlight them in your Bible if you need to. But let those verses talk to you. Don't let them just be words in the Bible. Let them take heart inside of you and see what God does with that faith. Amen. Uh, Pastor Don, uh, a question was brought to me in regards to what is your vision for the church moving forward, I mean, you know, once it's, everything's gone, and then, let's say hypothetically, whatever problems we're having right now, we've already passed all that. Sure. The church is here. What is your vision for the church? Well, the, the vision is, is, is really simple. You know, the, the whole idea of the golf course, and the cl- uh, clubhouse, and the restaurant, and even more importantly, the Boys and Girls Club, mm-hmm. is to build community in that area. I mean, in that area, I mean, it is almost that Rancho Bellagio uh, golf course community, whatever, they have really united themselves, especially through this project. Mm-hmm. We've got probably about five to 10,000 homes, and there's apartments right next door that you know Bridge owns. There's a bunch of folks there that basically unified themselves through this project and through you know their little community um, area that they call home in that, in that southeast area of Marino Valley. What I want to do is I want that area to be a Christ-centered area. So my vision would be is to put in there a community church. A church that's going to care about your spiritual needs. You know, the clubhouse and the restaurant will take care of your, your um, physical needs you can eat. You know, the golf course will take care of your recreational needs. The Boys and Girls Club will take care of some of your family needs. But what's going to take care of your spiritual needs? What's going to take care of knowing that there's going to be people in your community that knows you, loves you, and is going to care for you, pray for you, help you? 
That's what a church is all about. Church is all about worshiping God. Church is all about giving Him glory. But church is all about community. Church is all about building each other up. You know, like-minded folks building each other up in Christ and allowing us to take on each other's burdens so that we can be a, a blessing to each other. That's what a community church does. Mm-hmm. And that's what I see this church in that clubhouse, in that area doing. It's going to be the spiritual uh, spiritual outlet for those who want to be led by Christ in that area. So I look at it, you know, you know that area's got its own community. I saw the passion, kind of yeah. like what Eric told me. Yeah. You know, he was so shocked that hundreds to 200 people would come out to a meeting yeah. to talk about yeah. this thing. Yeah, that was shocking. This passion. You know, and, and, and Donovan, again, gets a lot of the credit for this because he's the one who did the advertising. But guess what? Some of these things, they had three, four days notice. That's it. Yeah. And yet you still packed out the place with 100 to 200 people. Mm-hmm. What that tells me is there's passion in that mm-hmm. area. Well, I think when there's passion in that area, we need to have that passion into Christ. We need to have that community led by God. And that's why I see a community church in that the excitement of, of, of a golf course and a, and a restaurant is going to be even overshadowed by allowing God to lead us. And that's, that's what I see. I see a beautiful community church that's going to grow, that's going to be building up people, and it's going to be the spiritual leadership of that project. Yeah, you know, I, in a lot of neighborhoods I see, you know, like you see these big projects come up, and then the project is there, and then five years later it's, it's uh, excuse my language, hellhole. Yeah, that's true. You know? And you notice that um, in these areas, you know, if, if Maybe it's just what I believe, but if it isn't God-centered or has some kind of spiritual aspect somewhere around that neighborhood, it it, it it's going to go down. It I mean, does. I mean, that's what Satan says. Okay, yeah, there, there's God in around this neighborhood, so I can go ahead and take this. Well, then that's the other thing that we've talked about since day one is that Eric and Bridge um, Bridge mm-hmm. Investments has been one of the most unique developers that I've ever worked with, and I've worked with hundreds of them in my in my um, professional career. He's been the most unique because he actually did put people for. Yeah. Is he here for the money? Of course, of course. Does he want to make a profit? Of course, of course. everything's about money. We all get it. But this particular developer literally spent millions of dollars for the community. Yeah. In addition, in addition, not only making all the changes and being delayed a year, but this boys and girls club, mm-hmm. you know, the idea of putting in at least a quarter of a million dollars to, to promote the boys and girls club, mm-hmm. he's doing it for the community. Well, a project, like Donovan said, like a project that is that committed, obviously to money, but mostly to the community, it is perfect for a Christ centered church to be the hub of this beautiful. Yeah. I'm going to tell you this right now, folks. I don't know if you, if you live in Reno Valley, you'll, you'll see it. If you don't live in Reno Valley, you'll hear about it. This golf course, clubhouse, and restaurant will be the talk of the town mm-hmm. for many years. Yeah. It will put Marino Valley in the map because this will be run by professional people. I'm talking about uh, golf pros who's going to be managing it. I'm talking about a restaurant that's going to be five stars. It is going to put Marino Valley in the map of all these other cities that are growing and thriving. God's got to be in the center of that. Yeah. I'm telling you, God is, needs to be. If that thing's going to grow to insurmountable numbers, it's going to be because God is in the middle of that. And that's when I'm praying it happens. Right. And, you know, and, 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 and to get continued blessings. Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. When you surrender the, to God and allow God to lead, God blesses because that's who God is. He's faithful. Right. He's faithful to those who put Him first. And we're going to put God first in this church in that area. And especially with this project. Uh, like I said, uh, Eric didn't have to do what he had to do. Mm-hmm. You've got some developers that will be nameless on this show that have been in this town supposedly 30-something, 40 years, and they have nothing to show but our tax dollars in their pocket. Yeah, and it's not like he's doing this to, for any political gain or he's not doing this for any other future motives. He's, he lives down south in, in Carlsbad mm-hmm. area, so once he's finished with this project, he's going to go to another project outside mm-hmm. this city. So that tells me that he doesn't. He had no other hidden motives for what he's doing right. for this city. He did this because this is the way him mm-hmm. and his business is run, right. and I respect that. I really do. Yeah. Perfect for Christ. Yeah, you know, and, and then uh, him being straight up about his motive. You know, exactly. Like, you know, I mean, you got some guys coming. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's going to bring twenty thousand jobs. Again, shall be nameless. It never materialized. Yeah, exactly. Everything that Eric promised has come. To- and it will come true. I'm, I, because I'm, I'm going to be, Donovan and I may be part of the uh, team that does the promotion for the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. You, know, I, I, you know, this thing is big on the Boys and Girls Club because it's not only giving the kids an, an opportunity for a, a, a recreation after school, uh, uh, be able to study mm-hmm. for school, 
uh, learn how to play golf. But there's going to be so many more activities. That's where the money's going to. They're going to buy buses so they can find kids and bring them into the facilities so that they can be, uh, be able to utilize it and, and enjoy it. We're talking a lot of time, effort, and money to help kids. Yeah. And he's doing it right now because I was part of that negotiation. So I'm telling you, everything he's promised, he's doing. I respect that. And I'll tell you this, he's been very positive about the church being in his facility. Mm. So I, I, I know that this is what God wants. Right, right. Especially in that area because it's kind of a remote it is. area. Yeah, on the, kind it's of on the other side. It's kind it's of like separated side. from a lot right. of other areas. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't realize here on this side of the city, which is the Edgemont area, this is where City Hall is and, you know, uh, Riverside is like right across the street over there. So we're right on the border. But uh, for those that don't know, I am a product of the boys club. So back in the day, it was the boy. You had two separate clubs. You know, sure. one club together. But I am a product of the Boys Club out of Fullerton, California, and uh, I'm, I'm a big advocate, so when that does happen, I'm going to be definitely... Well, and another thing that we just talked about on this show was um, one of the reasons why I think this country is going in the wrong direction is because of um, the, the absence of a family. And now knowing having these kids, instead of being on the streets doing mischief, being in a, in a, in a supervised area, enjoying themselves, and, and you know, I, I was part of a boys club, Don was part of a boys club, and it did nothing but helped us, yes. and it will help so many families because they're no longer doing things that are, you know, probably outside what they should be doing, mm -hmm. but they're getting, they're doing things that are positive, and something that's, you know, that, that's, help, that's helpful for the family, so nothing but good stuff, nothing, nothing but, good, but stuff. good stuff, and, you know, and to me it's long overdue, I, when I was seven years old living here, and this, well, back then it was wasn't even a town; it was Edgemont. Um, we didn't have a boys and we didn't have a boys and girls club then. You know, we had a senior center. We didn't have a boys and girls, which didn't make sense to me. But then there was a lot of people out here. Mm -hmm. However, uh, now this is coming in, into effect, and I'm going to be behind it 100. percent Absolutely. And again, I just want to keep ask you to continue to pray for the the schedule to be made to. This, the, the, having this project ready for the golf to be up and running with the uh, restaurant and the clubhouse by the end of this year, the church pre launch services by the end of this year. Please keep praying for, right. the, for that right. to happen mm -hmm. because I'm telling you, there's, there's, a, there's an evil one out there that wants to stop this project, yes. especially knowing that there's going to be a church in there. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be more and more obstacles coming forward. Mm -hmm. We know what's going to happen, it always does. So I need your prayers to say, no, nothing's going to get in the way of glorifying God in this project. And we need you, uh, Pastor Don, to be uh, continue to be faithful and strong because I know you get frustrated when these obstacles are thrown in front oh, of you. Oh, there's a lot of them. But uh, we're going to continue to pray for I mean, think about it. We're about a year and a half late. Yeah. We were supposed to start this thing back in 20, really early 2017 or end of 2016, and here we are at the end of 2018 and possibly getting started. So, but you're right. It's God's timing, not okay. mine. And time. this is what God wanted. We're going to be faithful. And, no also, matter what. and also remember uh, some things that are uh, doing in a political realm because certain council members change seats. Mm -hmm. That could mm -hmm. be a delay. So, so we always have pray. to. Yeah, we just got to keep praying because you know, nothing can stop our prayers. And prayer is so key. Important. Yeah, exactly. Key. So key. So. A couple minutes left. Okay, the other thing I want to ask you to do is again, uh, thank you so much for en uh, enjoying this podcast with us. We 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 love doing it. I I, I know I do. I don't have to do all the work. So. <laughs> hey, he has to do all the work. So, but it's really a joy to come yeah. each and every week to be able to present our you know our thoughts on on Bible verses and then lift you up with other things that we're talking about here. Again, I want to just continue to stress to allow God to lead you. Surrender those burdens. Surrender those stress that you're feeling right now to Him. Try it. Give it to Him. Put it at the foot of the cross. And then allow God to fill you with the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, that peace, joy, and love that only God can. Let God be your instrument of your uh, joy for the day and not anything of this world. Mm -hmm. So, again, continue to enjoy the Reflections Ministry Facebook page. Please continue to um, share it with all your contacts, with all your family and friends. I'm going to have a further update on my published books yes. that's going to be coming out in the fourth quarter of this year. We awesome. started with the regular books, the self-publishing. We went to the actually published through Lucid Books, and hopefully that's going to be coming, coming out here in the next few months. So we'll keep you on track on that. That's all I've got. So for, again, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you so much for listening, and God bless you, and God bless you and your family. You guys have a great week. Be safe. Again, it's, it's Heat Advisory. We'll see you guys again next week on the Pastor Don Weekly Devotional, 8 plus 4.